Okay, let's talk about uh, the branch and bound algorithm. Let's try to implement it for the graph coloring problem. So what I have here is the depth first search implementation that you saw in a previous video. You can see I can set it up, layout, and hit depth first search, and it will do a depth first search, and it tells me uh, there's no coloring possible in this case. Um, so that's a good example, you know, a good example setup for um, branch and bound because you know we want an over constrained problem. So what we want to do is change this such that each uh, constraint violation, each edge uh, has a value of one and uh, find the coloring then that minimizes the sum of those constraints. So let's look at the code over here and you hear here this is depth first search. So first I want to explain at a high level what uh, branch and bound does. So it, it does, it, branch and bound is really based on depth first search. So we're going to do a depth first search, right? So we're going to start uh, some root node and then we have, you know, the first variable, let's say x1, uh, set it to a color. Then we go to the next one, x2, set it to a color, x3. And let's say we have four variables in this example, x4. So we set each one to a color, uh, say blue. They're all blue, 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 as we go down the depth of our search. Now we're a leaf node, right? And um, so for the leaf node, what we have at this point is a solution, right? So we have a solution and uh, we can calculate its total cost. Let's say, you know, the total cost or, you know, the number of constraint violations in this case is, let's say, three. Right. So we have this global variable, that's the total cost, and uh, actually, we, we don't call it the cost, we call it the bound. Um, so that cost is our bound, that's the bound and branch and bound, and these are the branches in branch and bound. So what happens is this is like a global, this is a global variable that we're going to keep and now, you know, say we come back up here, we might try some other ones. Uh, we would try some other colors. Let's say those don't work, right? So we would try some red and that, you know, that has a cost of four, so it's not better. And, you know, we might try green and that also doesn't work. It's a cost of four, so it's still not better. So we keep that bound around. Then we go back up here one more level and, uh, we might try red, but let's say, for example, we try red, and the moment we try red, we know, oh, the cost uh, for this partial solution, now this is the key, the cost for x1 blue, x2 blue, x3 red is equal to three, uh, which is weird because it wouldn't work out that way, would it? Uh, but let's just say it's three. Um, so, it's not really graph coloring, it's some other problem. So the cost is three. So that means and that uh, the total cost will have to be at least three. So, you know, I haven't explored these leaves. I haven't gone down a lower down, but I know uh, that the costs only go up. And so this says, this is something that has to be true for your problem, right? So the costs uh, go up or stay flat, but you know, go up as you move down the tree only, right? Only go up. So they c you cannot assign a new variable and have the cost go down. If that is true, right, this assumption, uh, then you can use branch and bound. So this is the big assumption, which of course is true for graph coloring, because if I, once I color a third node, my costs are only going to increase. My costs never go down because the costs are the number of edges that have been violated, you know. Uh, so there you go. That's what, what branch and bound does is if you get to a partial solution like this one and um, you find that your cost right now is three and my bound is three, I know, hey, I'm not going to do better than my current solution because the bound, remember, is on a full solution. So I don't need to go down this way. Similarly, maybe I go down here and I color that guy red again and uh, my cost is three again. So that means I don't need to go down there. I can backtrack and go over here and try red. So that is how branch and bound 
you know, trims the search tree. So it trims the search tree in this way. Uh, and because it's a depth first search, it's very nice because then, you know, we can still do, we can still try to sort these guys uh, later on, uh, you know, as you try to more improvements, you can try sorting these guys, you can try improving your bounds and uh, improving, you know, doing this calculation, uh, uh, making it more like an A star search. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to implement a straightforward branch and bound. So uh, you know how that works. Let's do it. So here's my depth first search. I'm going to change this instead of being depth first search. It's going to be a branch and bound search. So uh, to branch and bound and uh, DFS is well, it's not gonna be DFS, it's gonna be branch and bound, branch and bound, bab, turtle zero. So I'm gonna call that, and like I said, we're gonna need two global variables. We're gonna need a bound, and we're also gonna need a solution. Uh, and uh, so on my setup, I'm gonna set my bound to some really large number because we want to minimize the cost, so we want to make sure that it gets overwritten and set the solution. I don't really need to do that, but why not to just the empty list. So then the solution is going to hold the solution. You'll see. Um, so branch and bound just calls that guy. Uh, actually, I should probably put these for not in there, but in here. That makes more sense. So I can call it multiple times and then I call branch and bound which is gonna be this guy here branch and bound it's not gonna return anything anymore so but we're still gonna go through each color and instead of uh, like before in branch and bound I say if there are no constraint valuations violations then we keep going uh, I'm going to need to know how many constraint violations there are. So instead of just a Boolean. So to report uh, total cost, which is what I need to know now. Get rid of that. And the total cost is very similar to this. It's just going to be the count of violated links. Remember, we we're using we're just counting the links that have that are uh, not black right so black is like the no color color we're gonna ignore it uh, it means that node has not been set yet and then we're just count counting the links that are not black and uh, have the same color node at both ends and that is going to be our cost function so it's the sum of all those just you know each one is worth one okay awesome so uh, let the um, the cost is gonna be the total cost um, we can calculate that right and then then what do we do so we're not gonna do this anymore um, at the leave node so it's important so if we are at a leave node, then that means we have a solution. We have a full solution. So we're going to, that's at the point at which we need to check if my cost is less than my bound, then, hey, we have a new bound. Set bound to be the cost and set the solution. I need to save the solution in this global variable and the solution is going to be the current coloring. So it's going to be a map over all the current nodes. So I need a list of nodes. I want to save a list of pairs. Uh, there's a list of pairs where the first one is the actual node itself and the second one is the color of the node. Okay, is that right? Uh, solution is a list of node color, node color. That, 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 that. Awesome. That's it, right? 
so we don't need to report true we could uh, we we shouldn't stop because we could my the next color might be good so we, we should keep going to the next color so we have a leave node uh, then we do that uh, if we're not a leave node, uh, so I'm going to need an if else. Uh, not a leave node. Uh, then uh, we want to keep going recursively, but only if my current cost is less than the bound. So again, if my cost is less than uh, um, the bound, then I want to recursively call myself. So I'm going to do well that right there. B A B Bab branch and bound on the next turtle. I think I got too many parentheses there. That closes that, that closes that, that closes this for each. And uh, I still have to reset my color to black, right? So this is when I'm down here. I mean, I've tried all the colors in my subtree or, you know, all the colors for myself and my subtree. And so I'm, I'm returning. So before I return, I just should reset myself to the no color color, um, which is black. And uh, let's see if we have any errors. Okay, we got to change this from depth first search to branch and bound okay set up lay it out and uh, branch and bound and uh, oh i don't need that forgot to get rid of that okay try again set up lay it out uh, branch and bound and up it goes so it's going to try all possible, you know, well, it's going to do some of that tree trimming and you can see it's slow. It's going to take a long time. Um, I don't know. Let me go halt it. I'm going to go to tools, halt, which will stop it um, just to see if it is working. And if it's not a leave node, uh, let me change this to an if else so I'm just gonna print out you know trimmed or just trim All right so it's gonna print trim whenever um, this is the recursive call uh, but whenever it trims part of the tree it'll print out trim that way we can at least see that it's trimming the tree I'm gonna reduce the number of nodes and maybe it will finish um, lay it out and go so you see there's a lot of trimming going on it keeps printing out dun, 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 dun. so it appears to be trimming still trying colors let me try an even smaller problem i think you gotta go really low uh for me to for it to actually show 10 okay branch and bone Done. Apparently there is no solution. Uh, so, yeah, well, <laughs> uh, there's always a solution. So I forgot to put solution. If I can show the solution, there it is. Um, I should at the end set everybody to the right color. So how, do we, how would I do that? I would say for each in the solution. For each guy in the solution, I'm going to ask. Uh, the first to set his color to the second item, right? And uh, let's do that again. Set it up, lay out, and uh, branch and bound. It goes. And it finds the solution. And so that's the solution it found. Uh, it's hard to verify. So I'm going to just put five, five of these guys here and reduce the edges, set it up, lay it out. 
Um, so that way maybe I can verify the solution. So here we go. That's the solution I found really quickly now. And uh, yeah, that I think that's the best we can do here. All right, with three colors. Um, we have no, I'm not sure, <laughs> but I think that's the best we can do. So we have to test this to make sure this is actually working, but I think it looks pretty good. Um, so that's branch and bound. This is the code if you want to try it out and then you can uh, try to improve it by instead of you know just going in the standard order or just this particular order try to find better orders you know maybe depending on the number of links that each node has.